Police officers responding to the call tried to turn over the unconscious boy lying face down, but his face was gone. An explosion disfigured the boy's head, and this happened right after he decided to chew some gum. So, it turns out- A chewing gum? Exploded his face? Out that sweets can harm you in more ways than just extra- Okay, after that video, I will not eat any candies or sweets again. Calories or harmful additives. Candies can kill you. How can chewing gum blow half your face off? Mm. And what other unexpected ways can sweets take your life? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, Our sweets are not that healthy. We all know that, okay, because it's just sugar. As always, viewer discretion is advised. But it's not that March actually. 25th, 2024. A girl from Patiala, India, named Mon V, was celebrating her 10th birthday. Her family ordered a cake from a local bakery, Cake Kanha. In this video, we see Mon V blowing out candles surrounded by her family. She's smiling and happy. A poignant memory, as these are her last moments. This is real footage, guys. Real footage bec right before the accident. Guests treated themselves to the dessert around 7 p.m. And then the birthday girl went to bed. Early the next morning, Mon V complained of a dry mouth, asked for water, and fell back asleep. When her family checked on her later, she was already unconscious. They rushed her to the hospital where doctors confirmed that she passed away. The next morning, the entire family felt ill and Mon V's sister vomited. The family submitted samples of the party food for testing. Experts found that the culprit was the birthday cake. It contained an excessive amount of saccharin, a sweet synthetic compound found in many foods and drinks in small doses. However, in large quantities, it causes a rapid spike in blood glucose levels. The dose that little Mon V accidentally consumed was fatal. But sometimes sweets can be deadly not because of their content. Oh no, <laughs> new fear is unlocked. New fear is unlocked. Like in a small amount, it's it's still in our food, but too much is like deadly. What was that? Never heard of that. But because of their packaging. January 11th, 2024. 25 year old Orla Baxendale from the UK traveled to Connecticut. She was a dancer set to perform the lead in a production of Alice in Wonderland, but it wasn't meant to be. For a quick snack, Orla bought some cookies from Stu Leonard's. Her friend even recalls her reading the label before eating. Orla took a bite or two, and within a minute, she started turning red and struggling to breathe. She lost her balance, clutching her throat as something constricted it, preventing her from taking a breath. It was anaphylactic shock, a severe allergic reaction, she immediately injected herself with adrenaline, which was supposed to help, yet this time it didn't. Orla died. She died? Because of an allergic reaction? No one could understand why. Guys, subscribe my channel if you're new here. My name is Mats. Orla. Okay, not a good moment for that. I'm sorry, but... What? I don't know if I want to continue that video because, like, I just unlocked new fears. Orla was allergic to peanuts, but they weren't listed among the ingredients. I mean, they weren't listed on the packaging. It was later discovered that the cookies indeed contained peanuts. The manufacturer had simply forgotten to mention them. This small mistake proved fatal. Yeah, of course she died, but what happened after by? After what? Did they go to court with the company because it was not listed on the ingredients? What shocked me even more was that even healthy sweets can be dangerous. For example, everything can be like in any way deadly. Come on. A very controversial incident involved a 17 year old girl named JT. Due to her love for spicy food, she suffered from a stomach ulcer. After taking the medication prescribed by doctors, her stomach pains would ease. I'm not a fan of spicy food. But she started experiencing depressive thoughts. I just cannot enjoy spicy food because I'm let just fighting against the spicy smell in my mouth. And panic attacks. JT decided to switch to chewable antacids in the form of gummies. These are designed to neutralize excess stomach acid and reduce heartburn. Initially, she ate just a few in the morning, but soon these gummies replaced her breakfast. JT noticed that the more gummies she ate, the more spicy food she could consume. Oh, no way. Moreover, she read on an internet forum that antacids contain calcium carbonate, which not only neutralizes stomach acid, but also strengthens bones. JT oh, no. So she eats a lot of them and 
she overdosed herself. Felt better than she had in years. And the thought of improving her bone health delighted her. But soon, strange things began to happen. Of course. She started going to the bathroom frequently, passing more fluid than she was drinking. One morning, she woke up at 7, brushed her teeth, and when she finished, it was already 1 p.m. JT had no idea where those six hours went. Then, she didn't realize when she ate two entire bottles of chewable antacids at once. And that's 108 gummies. She lost consciousness and ended up in the hospital. What? She was so out of it that when doctors asked her who the current president was, she said, Abraham Lincoln. No, that's not correct. Blood tests showed that JT had hypercalcemia. This means she had so much calcium in her body that it blocked signals to her cells, including those in her brain. This is why she was speaking incoherently, experiencing seizures, and ultimately losing consciousness. Oh, this is scary. Doctors gave her medication to stimulate her kidneys to expel calcium through urine. When JT came to, she was shocked to find herself in the hospital and had no memory of the past hours. Although doctors managed to save her life, JT never fully recovered and still suffers from kidney problems. But sometimes candies can poison you, not just by accident. Yeah, but because she overdosed, like in a huge amount, nothing and anything can be dangerous. It's always like the, the balance, yeah? Bright. Not too much, not too less, with all. Mm. Valentine's Day, 1871. The Beard family received a visit from their neighbor, Christiana Edmonds. She bought Miss Beard some chocolate cream candies from a local confectionery. After eating one, Miss Beard immediately felt ill. Her husband, Charles Beard, yelled at the guest and threw her out, but he didn't let his wife go to the police. That was a mistake. People in Brighton started getting poisoned by the chocolates, one after another. Interestingly, these were wealthy residents, including Christiana Edmonds herself. One case even ended in death. It was four-year-old Sidney Barker. Yeah, of course, when you're like a little kid, like four years old, it's poisonous, more poisonous, of course, because your body is like smaller, but actually why the, why was there poison inside the chocolate? Who this lost is the, this is the real question we want to get answered. His life from the chocolate creams. These deadly sweets were sold at Maynard's shop, a well-known confectioner on West Street. They weren't cheap, as Maynard vouched not only for their taste, but also for their quality. So, why were his customers getting poisoned by the chocolate? This story reads like a twisted detective tale, and to find the right answer, we need to go back to the previously mentioned Valentine's Day. Charles Beard reacted so sharply to the chocolates given to his wife because the neighbor who bought them was his lover. When Mr. Beard decided to end their affair, Christiana bought the chocolates from Maynard's and laced them with strychnine a type of pesticide, simply put, poison. She then returned some of the boxes to the store, claiming they weren't what she needed. Christiana did this to divert the police attention from herself, focusing instead on the shop owner. Mr. Beard figured it out when his wife fell ill. Still, he stayed silent for a long time, realizing that no way this is a real story. That was like they used pesticide as poison. If he exposed Christiana to the police, He'd also have to reveal their affair. Eventually, he spoke up. Christiana, dubbed the chocolate cream poisoner, was found guilty of murder. Hmm. However, she didn't go to prison. She was declared insane and sent to Broadmoor Hospital, the criminal asylum of the time. However, there's an even more horrifying story where a child also passed away because of chocolate. Only this time, it was intentional. October 31st, 1974. Halloween night. Ronald mm. Clark O'Brien from Deer Park, Texas, went trick-or-treating with his kids and neighborhood children in the nearby town of Pasadena. One resident didn't open the door, so the disappointed group moved on, but Ronald stayed behind. Later, he caught up with the kids and handed them candies, which he claimed the stingy homeowner had eventually given him. Back at home, Ronald allowed his eight-year-old son, Timothy, to have one of these candies before bed. But after taking a bite, the boy grimaced, said it was bitter, and then ran to the bathroom to vomit. Soon after, he started having convulsions. 
O'Brien held Timothy in his arms as he passed away. This is my biggest fear, guys. We don't do it on Halloween. I'm from Germany originally, for those who don't know. And we don't do it on Halloween. We do it on New Year's Eve. Like on the 31st of December, we are going around from house to house and collecting like sweets. We used to when I was young, when I was a kid. But now I'm old and do, don't do it anymore. But now afterwards, and I ate all those candies from every house. And whereas when there is some crazy guy who just like put poison in it or anything, I don't know, because they just like it poison any kids this is so creepy i ate all of them i had like one backpack full of candies and then i had like enough candies for two or three months and i ate every day you know what i mean fortunately nothing happened but now afterwards when i think about it but it's just a new fear in general i trust my my village neighbors yeah you know what i mean way on the way to the hospital news of the child's death spread quickly through the town causing panic among parents. Many handed over all their kids' candies to the police, fearing they were poisoned. An investigation revealed that the candies Ronald had given the children contained a double lethal dose of potassium cyanide, enough to kill two adults. O'Brien immediately informed the police of the house where he supposedly got the candy. However, over 200 people confirmed that the resident was at work at the time. The police discovered that Ronald had a debt of $100,000. A month before the incident, he had taken out life insurance policies on each of his children for $20,000. The morning after Timothy's death, Ronald called the insurance company. A store clerk also confirmed that O'Brien had asked about buying cyanide cheaply. Clark was sentenced to death and became known as the Candyman. And what is wrong with you, man? The man who killed Halloween. It's chilling to think how obsessed Christiana Edmonds and Ronald Clark were with their goals, willing to poison innocent people. Yeah. But most often, the danger of sweets comes from accidents. On January 13th, 2024, in England, police officer Chad Stevens noticed a car driving unusually slowly on the highway with its hazard lights on. He pulled over and so did the car. A woman emerged, clutching her throat, unable to speak, but it was clear she was in distress. Officer Stevens realized she was choking. He quickly performed the Heimlich maneuver, a first aid approach for choking. In this dash cam footage, you can see him standing behind the woman, sharply pressing on her abdomen below the navel to clear her airway. All this occurred amid heavy traffic, so he also had to watch out for passing cars. After a few attempts, a chewing gum shot out of her mouth. It turned out that just moments before, another driver had abruptly cut her off, startling her. This caused her to choke on the gum she was chewing. If Chad Stevens hadn't been in the right place at the right time, the woman could have died from asphyxiation Crazy. or even caused a crash due to her inability. This guy is a hero. <laughs> he just saved her life like with easy to react properly on the road. And incidents like this happen all the time. Yeah. For instance, in 2012, a woman was chewing gum when she accidentally fell down the stairs. The fall wasn't fatal, but the shock caused her to inhale the gum, which blocked her airway. Unfortunately, she lost her life. And the scariest part is that young children are often the ones who end up in these situations. In this video, really? you can see a terrifying moment when a three-year-old boy named Damien Valencia choked on a candy the size of a quarter right in a store. The clerk immediately called 911. 911, what is the address of your emergency? This is Ray uh, calling the um, Green Valley Grocery 24. I need an yes, what's going on? Paramedic. Officers arrived quickly, and body cam footage from Officer Quinn Averett captured the moment he performed the Heimlich maneuver on the child. Semi-conscious, Damien eventually coughed up the candy and could breathe again. Still, oh not all stories like that feeling has to be so good. This have happy endings. In 2009, the police department in Konotop, Ukraine, received a strange call. Someone reported that something had exploded in a man's mouth. The oh, officer could okay, now we have the chewing gum exploding story from the beginning. Couldn't imagine how traumatic this could be, but when they arrived at the scene, they couldn't believe their eyes. 25-year-old Volodymyr Lykonos was lying unconscious, and his jaw, along with the lower half of his face, was mutilated. The medics were also shocked. They had never seen such a reaction to ordinary gum. 
The man was so severely injured that they couldn't save him. What was there? Black powder in the chewing gum? How can that happen? His life. To figure out what was wrong with the gum, the police took the remaining pack along with other packages from his room for analysis. It turned out that Volodymyr always dipped his gum in citric acid before chewing it. But could this food additive really explode? The thing is, Volodymyr was a chemistry student conducting various illegal experiments in his kitchen. Mm. That day, besides citric acid, he also had a powder called hexogen, a dangerous explosive. This mixture is four times more powerful than TNT. What? Volodymyr never stood a chance. Sometimes people can inadvertently cause not just one, but many deaths. And sometimes it's through something as simple as sweets. Yeah, of course. In 2015, hundreds of school children from the Caraga region in the Philippines suddenly fell ill. The city's hospitals were overwhelmed. What? Everyone was complaining of dizziness, painful stomach cramps, and diarrhea. This strange ill- 1,200 students fall ill in Caraga region after eating tainted candies. also affected some adults and residents of 11 neighboring towns. What? Eventually, nearly 2,000 people were suffering from food poisoning. The authorities ordered an immediate investigation, revealing that all the victims had eaten the same durian, mango, and mango steen flavored candies before falling ill. Tests showed the candies were contaminated with Staphylococcus bacteria, commonly found on human skin. But how did they get into the candies? The labels listed two manufacturers. One of them, Wendy's Durian Candies, wasn't registered with the US Food and Drug Administration, meaning it wasn't licensed. It turned mm. out the candy packaging was done in unsanitary conditions mm. and the workers weren't checked for illnesses. Some workers were infected mm. with E. coli and Staphylococcus bacteria could have contaminated the candies mm. because the workers didn't wash them. When you order food, when you eat outside, one just one worker, one chef in the kitchen has to be like ill and it's the bacteria landing in your food and then you get it as well. It's so easy so fast their hands after using the restroom and didn't prevent their sweat from because like it's not that long time ago to be honest just a few weeks i had the same issue not with that but with another one and it was really really disgusting what i had um so i don't want to go into, de into detail but it was really really disgusting yeah i thought it was like from food i have eaten as well like i ordered from restaurant or something it can be on every surfaces the bacteria can be on every any surfaces as well i have touched but i think it was just from food it was really really disgusting i'm getting on the sweets 12 people were arrested for these violations. Fortunately, none of the victims died. Unlike- Bro, 1,200 ate that? It's quite popular candy, the right? Next story. In the spring of 2016, in Laya district, Pakistan, dozens of people lost their lives after eating lattice. These are ball-shaped confections made from flour, sugar, and clarified butter, often served at family celebrations. So, one man bought a whole five kilograms of lattice for his child's first birthday. On April 17th, at least 50 people at the party tried the sweets, and 10 of them passed away that same day. Passed away? Not ill, not a food poisoning, they passed away, this is so dramatic. On May 1st, the death toll had risen to 33. Tests showed the confections were laced with a toxic incesticide called chlorephnipur. Pakistani police investigated the bakery where the lattice was bought and discovered it was right next to a pesticide shop. The shop was undergoing renovations and the owner had stored his products in the bakery's warehouse. But could the poison really have ended up in the sweets by accident? After Yeah, this is n just not smart. Don't put any poison like store in a bakery where some some other people are buying food to eat actually. This, this isn't just not a good idea. Interrogating the bakery owner, Khalid Mahmoud, it turned out this was no accident. Mahmoud had deliberately mixed the pesticide into the sweets after a fight with his brother and co-owner. Unfortunately, the ones who suffered most were not them. A little child lost his father and seven other relatives on his first birthday. Oh, imagine. Imagine your whole family dies because of some stupid guy because you ate the candy oh this is this is so dramatic this video is really tough for me guys actually because i 
I just have unlocked so many new fears. So, right now, take any candy from your stash and comment below if you're sure it doesn't contain pesticide. Bro, it can be in every food, not just candies. But this video was about candies. Guys, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Mats. We are the Hey Squad, guys. Subscribe my channel if you haven't done it yet. It's very easy. It's just one click down the video or here. Here are two other videos. Check them out. I try to upload daily on this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great day and bye-bye.